My name is James. I'm one of the pastors here at City Church, and I am really excited for our time together today. And I'll tell you why I'm excited. It's because I believe God is doing something new amongst us. Even amidst the challenges of this season. And let's be honest, a lot of this season really sucks, doesn't it? It's really challenging. But even amidst the challenges of this season, God is on the move. It's been amazing to even see this morning in the comments as people have shared a sense of God speaking to us. And I believe God's speaking to us from his word, from the Bible. This is from Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 to 21. This is what God is saying. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I form for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Don't you love that? God is saying to us, his people, city church, yes, there is a wasteland. Yes, this is a wilderness season, a dry season, a tough season. But in the, in the midst of it all is a stream, the water of my goodness and my presence available for you. What a message for us now, eh? What a message for our world. Yes, there's suffering and trial, but there is a stream there is life, there is hope. And God's saying, will you come and drink? Whoever you are and wherever you are, will you come and drink from this stream of my life and goodness in the midst of a dry and challenging season? You know, one of the words I'm hearing loads in this season, I'm I'm sure you're hearing it a lot as well, is the word unprecedented. I've heard the word unprecedented, an unprecedented number of times in this season. We are living through unprecedented times. You know, late the other night, my kids had been in bed for a few hours. I went upstairs and my oldest son, Noah, was still awake and his mind was turning over and he was saying, Dad, why can't I see my friends? Why can't, why haven't there been any friends' birthday parties recently? I miss a church and you think, wow, what? What a season to be living through. What a monumental, world-shaking, life-forming event we are living through in this season. It is unprecedented. But you know something? God uses unprecedented times to move in unprecedented ways. God uses unprecedented times and seasons to move in unprecedented ways and do unprecedented things. You know, God is not thrown or confused by COVID-19. In the midst of it all, God wants to do unprecedented new things in my life, in your life, in the life of our church and in our world. Do you believe that? City Church and our extended community and family joining us online today. Do you believe that? I believe that God is asking you and asking me this morning to lift our heads today, to step into a new place of faith and trust in him today, trusting that he is doing something new and wonderful, even in the midst of this challenging season. You know, God's doing new things in me personally. He's calling me into a greater place of trust and dependence on him. You know, because there's so much uncertainty in the world, isn't there? There's uncertainty for my family. There's uncertainty for how long and tough this season is going to be. There's uncertainty around how well I'm going to cope with it. There's uncertainty for us as a church. God is is drawing me to a place where I, I have to trust in him. Not just say I trust in him, which we get pretty good at doing, don't we, as followers of Jesus, but really trust in him. And can I be really honest with you this morning? I'm not sure I like it. 
this new thing God's doing where he's drawing me to trust completely in him because it's so much more comfortable in so many ways to say, I trust God, but really put my trust in my house or my finances or my ministry or my clever plans or rhythms and and things in life which I can control. It's uncomfortable to fully trust in God, but it's also exhilarating. It's also a good work of a loving God in my life. It's also the river of God's presence in the wilderness. God's doing something new. I bet he's doing something new in you in this season as well. Are you recognizing it? Are you leaning into it? Are you embracing it? And you know, he's doing something new in us as a church as well. He's doing something new in City Church. He's shaking us. He's speaking to us through this unprecedented time. He is wanting to do unprecedented things in and through us. He's looking to move us further into the wonderful vision that he's given us to see thousands gathered to Jesus. And just like the stuff in my personal life, it's not all comfortable. It's not all easy. And don't get me wrong, I pray wholeheartedly for this season to come to an end. But I also believe that what God is doing in this season as he shakes us, as he stirs us, is he's preparing us and as his people to move further into his plans and purposes for us. And over the next three weeks, we want to share with you three things we believe God is doing and saying to us as individuals and as a church. Three ways God is shaking us and calling us into something new in this season. And these three things are, you might want to jot these down. This is what God is saying to us as his people. Three things, make room, drink deeply and live generously. Make room, drink deeply and live generously. And as we explore these three things, as we dive together into what God is saying to us, I truly believe God is going to be preparing me and preparing you and preparing us as his people into kingdom advance, into the wonderful vision he has given us. I really believe the best is yet to come for us as a church and as his people. And so this week, over just the next few minutes, I want to talk to you about this phrase, this thing God is saying to us. The first one, make room. I don't know if you noticed in that Isaiah passage I read for you earlier, there's this interesting verse right in the middle, verse 20, which says this, the wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen. You know, in this picture, something incredible is happening. Animals are coming to the stream from across the desert, the stream of God's goodness and presence to drink. And it's not just any animals, it's the unlikely animals, the wild animals, the jackals, the desert owls. You know, these aren't the kind of classic noble beasts of of biblical imagery. They represent people who are far from God coming and finding the stream in the wilderness. You see, what God is doing, the stream in the wilderness, is not only or perhaps even primarily about providing that sense of God's goodness and presence to the people who already know him. That's part of it. But the stream in the wilderness is about those far from God coming, perhaps those who've never come before, coming and finding life and life in all its fullness, finding God and finding hope. And as I read these words and as I reflected on these verses and as I've listened to what God is saying to us through different people and through circumstances, I felt God saying to me, James, will you make room? Will you make room? Will you live your life in such a way that makes room for those who are far from God to come? Will you invite others in? Will you share what you have? Will you, in the midst of enjoying me and the stream of living water that is found in me, make it your life's priority that others come and find me too? Because you know what, James, this is God speaking to me now. You know what? You get to enjoy the streams of living water forever. And this life is so short. 
And eternity is going to be so long and so glorious. But there are those far from me and I love them as well and I want them to come. Will you partner with me? Will you make room? Make room. This is God's call to us as a church. As a church with a a vision to see thousands gathered to Jesus. Will we be church in such a way that draws those far from God in? And you know, it's easy to answer that question. Yes, I expect everyone who's a follower of Jesus watching today answers that question. Yes. But do you know this involves incredible sacrifice? Because thousands gathered to Jesus sounds wonderful, doesn't it? But to make room involves change, involves sacrifice, involves pain. It involves laying down our own preferences, our desires, our ambitions, our lives. If we want to be a church that gathers thousands to Jesus, it's going to involve change and sacrifice. It will involve everything we do and everything we are becoming first and foremost, not about ourselves, but about those who have not yet come to the stream in the wilderness. City Church, we will not be the same if we truly pursue this. But as well as being a a city church thing, it's also a deeply personal thing, a deeply personal challenge. Will you make room in the way you live? Will you make room for those far from God to come and find him? Because thousands gathering to Jesus is about thousands of, of ones gathering to Jesus, isn't it? It's about our friends, our families, our neighbours, our work colleagues. Are we living with that sense of urgency? Because, you know, if coronavirus reinforces anything, it's that the only hope for this world is Jesus. The only sure and certain foundation on which any of us can build our lives is Jesus. And we are surrounded Right now, in in the homes around us, we are surrounded by people who desperately need Jesus. You live and you work and you do life surrounded by those people who he loves and who desperately need him. You know, when Jesus looked out on a hurting world, when he saw that people were broken and hurting and in desperate need of salvation and new life, He had compassion upon them. And this is what he said. This is Matthew 9, verse 37 and 38. He said this, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Just look at the first bit of that phrase with me. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. You know, I think so often I, I do and we do, we so easily embrace the second part of what Jesus said. We, we get that the workers are few. We all feel, those of us who follow Jesus, you know, we're in a minority in a world that in so many ways seems to be largely turned away from him. But the same Jesus who said the workers are few also said the harvest is plentiful. So often we don't believe that bit, do we? We tell ourselves the harvest isn't plentiful. The harvest is meager. No one's interested. No one's open to spiritual things. No one cares. It's not true. Jesus didn't say the opposite of what he meant. The harvest is plentiful. It was then and it is today. In other words, there are people whose lives I touch on a day-to-day basis, who not only need Jesus, but whose hearts have been and are being prepared by him to be drawn to him, to respond to him, to receive him. Even more so in this season of wilderness, of wasteland, of shaking, of coronavirus, revealing to the world the futility and insecurity of life apart from Jesus. The harvest is plentiful. The question is, will we be workers? Will I be a worker? Will you be a worker? You know, that's not the same question as, are you a Christian? That's not the same question as, do you love Jesus? That's not even the same question as, would you like other people to come to know him? It's a bit more of a pointed question than that. Are you a worker? Are you living with this mindset? How can I draw others to the stream of living water and hope and life that is found in Jesus? Are we living with the sense of urgency? 
So let me finish by asking you this question. How are you going to make room? How are you going to live in such a way that draws others to Jesus? And I want to challenge you to do two things. Really simple. Pray and act. Pray and act. Firstly, pray. Let's pray for the people we know and love and want to see come to know Jesus. And I don't mean just a nice little prayer every now and then. I mean, let's contend in prayer. Pray relentlessly. Pray with passion and fervor. Feel the weight of the lost. I mean, commit to praying for these people every day, fasting, seeking God, praying for them to come to the wonderful stream of living water. And second thing, act. What one thing could you do this week to make room, to invite and draw others to Jesus? What one thing could you do? I know this is more challenging in the current circumstances, but God is still moving. God is still wanting, in fact, more than ever to draw people to him. God is still stirring people spiritually. Maybe there's a friendship you've had for a while and God is saying to you, it's time to share something of your faith with that person. It's time to turn up the spiritual temperature in that friendship. It's time to tell them about Jesus and the difference he's made in your life. It's scary, but Jesus says the harvest is plentiful. Maybe there's someone you you need to invite personally to come and check out church next Sunday with us online or come and join your city group one evening to say, hey, you know, Life's tough at the moment, but one thing I found so helpful is my church community, is my faith, is my city group. I don't know what it is for you, but but why don't you commit to that one thing? The harvest is plentiful. The wilderness is real, but there is a stream in the wasteland. And our God is wanting to draw those far off in this season more than ever. He's doing something new. And he's saying to us as a church and as individuals, will you make room? So guys, can we pray right now? And I mean, let's really pray. (laughs) Really acknowledge that we come before an almighty God right now and ask him to draw those who are far from God. Ask him to help us. Ask him to move us forward as a church and as individuals into everything he has for us. Hey, right now, you might want to you might want to kneel. You might want to hold open your hands. If you're watching this with somebody, maybe you want to just hold hands together or just express that sense of us coming before God as his people. Let's pray right now. Lord God, we come before you and we we say this season is so hard. God, I lift up to you every single person watching this at home right now who is really struggling. Whether it's emotionally or in their work or in their finances, whatever it is, Lord God, those who are feeling overwhelmed by this season, come Holy Spirit into their lives in a new way right now? Would you comfort? Would you encourage? Would you provide, Lord Jesus? But Lord, amidst the wilderness, amidst the challenge, we step into the new thing you are doing. We believe you are shaking us and you are shaking this whole world for a purpose. We see the stream in the wilderness. We see that you want to draw us and those far from God into deeper relationship with you. And we say, yes, Lord. We say, amen, amen, Lord. We say, we want to be your workers, Lord. And we pray right now, where you are right now, lift up those fervently who you want to see come to know Jesus. Call upon God for for their salvation, that they would be those who come and find new life in him in this season. And Lord, help us to act, help us to be courageous, help us to make room, help us to have compassion, help us to live our lives with a sense of urgency for this mission, Lord. And just one final thing before we worship God together. Maybe you are one of those jackals. Maybe you are one of those owls, and I don't mean to insult you this morning, but maybe you are one of those people who recognises I've been far from God. I am far from God. I'm an unlikely person. I don't consider myself a spiritual person. But if you're honest with yourself this morning, you know 
the fact you're watching this is a sign that in this season, God is drawing you and inviting you to come. There's a stream in the wilderness. There's a stream of his goodness and his blessing and his presence that is available for you. He loves the unlikely people. He invites us all to come and drink. Maybe like I mean, you recognize that God has had you on a journey in your life. You know, he sent his son Jesus to die on a cross for you so that all your sins and all your unlikeliness and all your baggage and guilt and shame and everything that stands in the way of you coming to the river and finding life can be removed. There is no barrier or obstacle except will you come this morning? If that's you, maybe this is a moment for you to come. Maybe this is a moment for you to let go of some pride and say, I recognize what God's doing in my life in this season. Sometimes we come a bit tentatively. It doesn't matter. He just says, come. And if that's you, why don't you listen to this prayer? I'm going to pray now. Pray it along with me in your heart. Church family, we can do this as well. And at the end, just join me in saying amen as a, amen as a sign of I, I agree. I'm going to pray now. Lord Jesus, in a dry and dusty place, I recognize that in you is a stream of living water. I recognize that you alone provide hope and comfort and strength and are the only sure and certain foundation on which to build my life. I thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross and rose again so that I could have new life, so that I could be saved, so that I could be forgiven and so that I could come to the stream in the wilderness and drink. I acknowledge your work in my life today and I invite you in as my Lord and as my Saviour. Amen.